there 370 people registered for this special call today. So that means that there's a community of people out there who are interested in using these tools for their own personal use. And also so that we can reflect back to the community, what's occurring as we come together and pulse the planet with heart coherence. When we take time out of our day to join with other people from around the world, that's what we're doing with the pulses now every month. And we find, gosh, there's people all around the planet who are, who are taking time out of their day to learn more about cultivating coherence and to actually be practicing together and having an impact on the field. And we're starting to feel it. We're feeling the accumulative effects of coming together like this. So thank you. And for anyone listening to the recording, thank you for showing up and adding your energy because whenever we show up and connect together, whether we're in person live right now or we're connected when we're here present watching, right? We're always connected and together. So this is a 60 minute session and we're gonna have a presentation. We have Roland McCready with us today um, from the HeartMath Institute, Director of Research. Uh, Roland's also one of the co-founders of the Global Coherence Pulse. And um, he, you know, he's the guy to help us to just keep understanding the potency of doing this practice and something around the tools that HeartMath is offering us to be able to track this as citizen scientists. And also just our, our personal, I, I'm starting to use the sensor more to really track my own personal coherence and, and what does that actual point feel like inside of me as I'm cultivating it in other ways in my life. And we also have Annette with us today. She is also with HeartMath and she is going to be guiding us in a meditation practice, very simple one. Um, so thank you, Annette, for joining us today. And some of you got to meet Jackie Waterman, who was in our technical uh, breakout group. And we want to support you if you're having any kind of difficulties. And so if you didn't get your issues handled beforehand, we can stay on a little bit afterwards, but there's support there. And I'm also going to put a link in the chat to some videos that was in the email you got where there's tons of resources around these tools. But today is for us to one, connect as a community and see there's others of us that want to, want to use these tools and play together. And for us to get a little kind of launch into this with Roland McCready, who can guide us in learning more. So Roland, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it over to you and I'm going to spotlight you for everyone. So we can see you big and thank you for taking time out of your day today and for this partnership in, um, yeah, maybe building a stronger community of people using these incredible tools. Well, thanks, Teresa. I'm happy to, uh, to be here and, and uh, see so many people, so bright, so many bright faces from around the world. And, uh, I always was just looking at the uh, global coherence map and, um, uh, seeing where people are from all over. It's uh, really neat to, to see that. All right, so let me go ahead and I put together a little presentation and, and we'll try and uh, answer some of the most common questions that we've gotten and, and that we tend to get around uh, the Global Coherence app and what that means and what's a coherence point and some of that. So let me share screen here. Okay. And Roland, I just want to say quickly to make sure that everybody, today we're asking you to join the Global Coherence Pulse pub public group so that we're all in one place today. So some of you might be in the global group and you just jump right over. Great. All right. And if you haven't joined that group, there's a when you come into the home screen, there's a button uh, down at the bottom that says join groups, that you press that and then there'll be a list of public groups and Global Coherence Pulse will be in that list and you just add that to your list. And it'll, from then on, it'll always show up in your main home screen and make it a lot easier. Uh, you can go right into that group. So for some of you, it may not have uh, found that, that function yet. So the Global Coherence app, um, let's talk a little bit about it here. There are, I'm not going to go into in-depth just because of time. We only, only have a, a few minutes here to, to answer some of the questions. But there, these are the, some of the main screens that you're seeing. Um, the one on the left, I call it the visualizer screen. For people who don't like numbers and all that, just want to see the visual of what we're doing, our, our collective, our personal and collective coherence. 
So the inner circle, uh, when you first open the app and go to that screen, will be probably very small and dim. And it grows in brightness and, you know, all of its kind of, it's all, of course, it's visualizing. It's always moving and sparkling and doing things. But that center circle gets bigger as your own personal coherence gets larger. And I'll, I'm going to explain what coherence is in a minute. And the outer, um, I get whatever color that is, kind of uh, reddish, violetish colors that swirl around, that grows and gets bigger reflecting the coherence of the group. Uh, whatever group we might be signed into, whether it's the global group or today the Global Coherence Pulse group. Um, and you can, by the way, you can set up your own groups. You can have a group for your family. You can have a group for, you know, the world like we do, for the global group. Um, you know, there's a lot of groups uh, that come together every day um, as, a, as a group to practice and have their own subgroups. Uh, there's one that, that I know of in Japan that's about 100 people that's been coming together every, every day for well over a year now. Uh, every day. So uh, hats off to them uh, to really add more love and compassion to uh, the global field. The center graph uh, or photo on this is the um, more the, well, it's the screen I like, but I'm, I like numbers and to see what my rhythm is. It actually shows you your, your actual HRV waveform and you, know, you can kind of see coherent and incoherent and then your coherence and then the group score whether and whatever group you're in uh, will be the, the, the total, the average of the coherence of the, the group. And then it, uh, a little box down up towards the bottom um, kind of tells you, how, you know, as you're going along, how many points you've contributed to the group score and, and uh, you know, keep going, doing a great job and some of those kind of kind of reminders and things. And then uh, one of my favorite features is on the far right, which is the global map, uh, which is so a little dot lights up wherever, you know, showing your, your dot will be a different color than the rest. Uh, just showing where your location is, but you get to see who who is there right now with me at this time, uh, doing this with me in, in my group. All right, so um, I always like it when there's thousands of people in the groups, uh, like we see see there. All right, so I uh, hope that helps. Just explain the basics. Um, well, I guess this is the global map I was just talking about. Now the to really get the, the most out of it, it's best to have one of the, the sensors. I've got one on, and I see a few of you do here in the photos, which is basically measuring your pulse, your heartbeat, and then it, what the app is doing is calculating the time between each heartbeat. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, now, you can use the app without, have, if you don't have a sensor, that's okay. Use the app anyway, because you still show up on the map, and you still have all the guides and that kind of thing, and everybody gets to, we can still actually track from a scientific perspective, that you're, that you're there, that you're participating, that you're adding, you know, your love and your compassion to the global field, right? So, but if you have a sensor, it's a lot more fun, a lot more interactive, but, uh, but not mandatory. And mm -hmm. there's uh, the Bluetooth sensor and also wired sensors, if you, whichever you prefer. I actually have a wired one on today, but I, I have both. Um, there's a new feature coming out I just want to tell you about. This will probably be in the next release uh, or update of the app. I, I'm really excited about it. I think it's really cool and because so I've been testing it here. And basically, the app is now going to talk to Wi-Fi, um, I'm sorry, Bluetooth light bulbs uh, like the one you see here. So you can kind of put this in your own lamp or wherever you want to put it. And you can then set it within the app so that either your co personal coherence or the groups, either one you have the choice, uh, can changes the colors and the dynamics of the bulb. So you can actually see it visually. So what a cool thing if you think of a classroom of kids sitting around trying to be coherent together and being able to, to see what they're doing and how what their activity either individually or as a group does to, to change the... Uh, and you can actually hook up a bunch of bulbs if you want, if you want to have your whole room changing and things. Uh, That's to awesome. It. So I think it's, <laughs> that's a neat, new, new feature on the way. We're testing it now. There's just one little bug that's not really ours. It has to do with Apple, um, as I just found out. Uh, change they made in their software that's making the the iOS version not always work, but the Android version's ready to rock. Uh, so anyway, that'll be coming soon, in the, probably in the next release. I uh, can't guarantee when it is. So one of the one of the questions that I get a lot is, well, what are we actually measuring? And it, so uh, co heart coherence is based on what's called heart rate variability. And our heart rate changes with every heartbeat. So that basically what I'm saying, the time intervals between each and every pair of consecutive pair of heartbeats is always slightly different. 
And the red line on the bottom is the electrocardiogram. So you're seeing that each one of the spikes is the contracting of the heart. And if you, you can actually look kind of closely here, and you can actually see that the time difference is always changing. That's what heart rate variability is. Now, we, I've done whole hour presentations on just heart rate variability. I'm not going to do that today. And there's a lot of those resources on the Pulse website and uh, also on Awake TV um, network if you want to get more in-depth on, on this, this type of thing. The blue line on top is what we call the heart rhythm, uh, more technically called instantaneous heart rate. So we're looking at what, what is the beats per minute equivalent for each pair of heartbeats. Uh, of course, it's not really beats per minute because you have to have a minute, but we can calculate each single pair of beats what the equivalent would have been if they were all the same. Hope that made sense. Um, so you can see there's a pattern emerging, right? If the time between each pair of heartbeats was the same, the blue line on top would be a flat line. Okay, not a good thing. We do not want flat lines in our in our heart rhythms in our HRV. We want nice variation, but we also want the pattern to be coherent. So here's what these these two graphs are from the same person. The one on the left is what we call an incoherent rhythm. And this is the rhythm that we typically would, would show, that would actually show up right on your app, right on your, the, if you like the screen, it shows your rhythm. Uh, you can see this in real time. If you're feeling things like anxiety or um, frustration or impatience, those kinds of things. Uh, so that's reflected in the pattern now, not, not necessarily the amplitude, but the pattern of the heart rhythm. Whereas the one on the right, this is someone who shifted from incoherence to coherence. We could really connect the two because you can actually shift really within a space of a heartbeat or two with some practice into coherence. And there is a breathing pacer, by the way, on the bottom of the app that's kind of moving back and forth. So if you breathe with that, that helps kind of move the system into coherence. And then, of course, as we say in the app, we activating and radiating feelings of appreciation or kindness care really help stabilize and really take you into that deeper state of, of co a coherent rhythm. So I hope that's making sense. So we, really, we want the, the pattern on the right, not the one on the left, especially when we're doing medita heart meditations and coming together to uh, pulse the planet with more love and compassion. But this is the rhythm that naturally emerges when we're, for most people, when we're actually really having heartfelt feelings of appreciation, love, kindness, gratitude, right? these types of, of more regenerative emotions. So what the app is, is doing, once you, you can see the waveform, there's an algorithm in there that is really tuned or designed to, to asking the question, how coherent is the rhythm, the heart rhythm, or not coherent? Okay, so that this is probably the question I get asked most, is what is a coherence point? Okay, so um, this, I think hopefully this graph will help explain that. So on the red line on the top, which is the HRV, this is real data, uh, you can actually see the pattern on the left is pretty incoherent based on what we I just showed you. Whereas over on the right, it's becoming more coherent. So they're starting to use one of the techniques, right? Uh, Heart-focused breathing and or heart lock-in, which uh, I'm not sure what Annette's going to do later, but probably something along that lines. Now, what the algorithm is doing is it's looking over the past minute of your data, because we're looking for a stable state here, a coherent state, not something that just was transient, but are we really shifted into and stable in that coherent rhythm? So we're looking at a minute, the last minute, and then we update every five seconds. So we're saying over that last minute, how coherent was it? And then we calculate a score for that. Uh, so a, a coherent score, a coherent point is the same thing. Right, so if you look at the blue line on the bottom over on the left, where you can see it's incoherent up on top, you know, the scores are, I mean, not horrible, but fairly low, uh, 1.3, 0 0.7, etc. Okay, now you can see there at about 300 or 350 seconds or so on the, the axis, the, the rhythm shifts and it starts becoming more coherent. Now, because it's over the last minute, it takes it a while for the score to really ramp up like you're seeing on, on the blue line. So now we're seeing scores that go up to 6.2, 6, et cetera. Okay? So there's, a, in other words, one of those coherent scores is calculated every five seconds. So it's going to update every five seconds and give you whatever your coherent score or points was for that last five second update. Does this matter? Wave of hands if this is making sense. I see a lot of hands. Some, okay, awesome. 
Now, what we can then do, and what we do do, is we add up all of those five second points or scores, and that's your accumulated score. Okay, so how many points did we add? Well, that's the, the total of just adding all those together over however long you were in the app and in the session. Right? Does that make sense? Mm. Great. Okay, so that's actually pretty simple, uh, but, it, but it, it, it's not necessarily very intuitive until I would explain it like that. All right, so coherence. Oh, here's what this one thing I wanted to, to show you. In, uh, in February of this year, early this year, um, we basically hit 50 million coherence points that had been added to the global field. Now, the, uh, I forget what the average was. Of, we, look, we were able to look at the average over that, uh, to, to that point, and I think it was two point something was the average of all the coherence points that had been added. And by the way, two is a really good score. You know, one is even okay. Two is great. Three is about where I hang out. Just, you know, uh, uh, but you can, you know, I've, I've, I think I've hit like seven or eight, you know, and yay, uh, but that's not my norm. Um, so just don't, you know, uh, any coherence you're adding is good. So don't over worry about the score being high or low. Are we really adding love or passion to the field? Is the way can. Okay, so, but, but that equated uh, back in February to... 28,000 hours of people being in a coherent state with the intention of adding love and compassion uh, to the field. That's just from the, the app in the global group. Okay, pretty cool, huh? So a lot of people around the world have really been adding a lot of love and compassion to the global field environment. Well, I think we're up around almost 73 million now. So we'll probably send out another kind of update. Yay, or to everybody when we hit maybe 100 million. Uh, which shouldn't shouldn't be that far down the road in a few months at, at the current rate. So personal coherence is really a deeper state than just what are the squiggly lines in our heart rhythms, um, although the, the heart rhythms and the heart uh, does reflect this state uh, to, to a certain degree. I mean, we can never really measure somebody's subject, subjective or inner state, but we have found over 30 years of research that the rhythms of our heart is the most reflective of what's really going on inside, what we're feeling, more so than our brain waves and other types of measures. Um, in fact, that's something we published back in the early 90s and kind of got well known for. And 400 studies later, you know, that have been now been published in scientific journals independently have uh, shown that practicing being in a coherent state has a lot of benefits. So 400 plus studies um, that have been done independently, lowering our blood pressure, improving our hormonal balance, uh, re speeding recovery from health challenges, uh, better test scores. I mean, it goes on and on. Um, so it's a good thing, right? It's pretty clear to practice being in, in coherence, both for our personal uh, health and well-being. But what we're really focusing on here on the, with the Global Pulse and the Global uh, uh, GCI or the Global Coherence Initiative is really about what are we feeding the world's field? Uh, what are we feeding the field of the planet? How are we helping lift the consciousness of humanity? Because both is going on. We're having the personal benefits and also the global. So basically, I, uh, the deeper level of coherence I'm really talking about is uh, trying to find here uh, on the top of this. This is really that optimal state in which our mind and emotions are brought into alignment and in sync, kind of key word there, with the energetic heart's intuitive guidance. In other words, we're really aligning and synchronizing with our larger self. You know, whatever you want to call it, right? Your higher self, your spirit, soul, doesn't matter. Uh, all cultures have their own term for it. That's, that's really what we're talking about, that intuitive guidance that we then align with, our, kind of our inner GPS. So coherence, when I'm talking about the heart rhythms, the HRV stuff, it's really ultimately reflecting synchronization. And um, we now know that that's the key, getting in sync. That's what really underlies better performance, better health, and so on. It's not just how much of a certain brain wave we have or something. Uh, that, yeah, that's relevant, but it's really our, 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 the activity in our brain and nervous system and between the different parts of our body, are they are synchronized and are harmonious. That's really what coherence means, right? How harmonious different parts of the system are working together. In fact, it's the ability of the brain to synchronize its own electrical activity that underlies our ability to even be awake and conscious, but certainly to be to to 
for it to function well, right? To perceive accurately, to learn, reason, make better choices, perform well. All is based on how in sync the neural systems are. And as it turns out, that's most reflected in the heart. All right now, you can even see this between, the, so the heart and brain can literally be in different levels of synchronization. So these, all these squiggly lines you're seeing here are brain waves. And at the very bottom is the, the ECG, and I kind of put the black lines in. You can actually see that the neural activity in the brain across the different sites of the brain are literally synchronized to the heart. You can actually see it in the raw data. Not only that, if you look closely, the states of activity in the brain are changing in between heartbeats. So the, the cardiac cycle has a major player in regulating brain function. Right? It's really not un well understood. I mean, some people are so focused, but it's actually, it's really clear. Um, you know, you can actually see it in the raw data. And we can also measure this. We can measure how in sync is the heart and brain. So this is, these are kind of what you can think of as heat maps, but uh, showing the synchronization in this case between the heart and brain. It's about 30 people. So the one on the left is sort of their baseline hanging out. And even there, just normal states walking around, Right now, uh, the, the, our heart and brains are in sync to a certain degree, right? Um, the one on the right is what it is when we're in a coherent state. The more red, the more in sync we are. Huge difference, right? Uh, so when we get coherent, we're synchronizing everything, the, the heart, the brain, the, the, the neural activity within the brain, within the nervous system. The whole system is, is more in sync. And just ref so when you see those sine wavy or coherent heart rhythms, a lot's going on inside um, to, to make that happen. So some of the high level uh, things we know that are all been shown in research studies is when we practice being more coherent or get coherent before we make decisions or before we make phone calls or send, you know, the hit the send button on that email to that person that just, you know, triggered us. Um, there's a lot of benefits. One of the main ones is it really helps us maintain our composure. When the external world is chaotic and polarized and, and, and go more to neutral, really to maintain our inner composure. Uh, a lot of our work these days is really on the social things. How do we get along better with each other? Right? How do we create more social coherence and harmony? Um, clearly, many studies, uh, we've done uh, thousands and thousands of studies, uh, well, of people in, in healthcare in hospitals, and we see that fatigue and exhaustion is usually cut in half. We have more energy at the end of the day. Um, many clinical studies showing that we're really promoting the body's ability to heal itself, to regenerate, right? We just have to stop, you know, be wearing it up and beating in all of the wear and tear we do from our own stress and mental and emotional processes and so on. Um, reason that coherence is so popular in sports, um, a lot of Olympic teams, uh, professional teams uh, are actively uh, do coherence training these days because it improves our reaction times, our coordination, right? Um, the, the bottom one I think is probably the most important and in increases our access to our own intuitive intelligence, you know, that information from our larger self, okay? Uh, and the, all these studies are published. And in fact, if you want to dig into the research, you can go to the heartmath.org website under a thing called the Research Library. There's hundreds of free papers and downloads there. Uh, really cool thing. This is a paper that was actually just published a few weeks ago uh, from groups around the world. I'm just showing you one here. But just being in a heart coherent state, I'm not going to go through all the background here. Being coherent for 15 minutes, a 15 minute heart lock in, increased our synchronization with the Earth's rhythms, with the, the resonant frequencies in the Earth's magnetic fields that lasted the next 24 hours. Now, in the study, these were groups uh, of 20 people in each group in five countries. So, this was a global effect. So, what we saw was when the people, we organized it, uh, this was a multi day, multi week study. But in the middle of it, we had everybody, all in these groups, do a heart lock-in for 15 minutes. So they were significantly more coherent, their own personal coherence. The synchronization amongst the people within the groups was significantly increased. In other words, their hearts synchronized. And it synchronized them with the global field uh, over the next 24 hours. Now, I can show you all the groups. They all look just like this. This is the same effect across all of the groups. So pretty cool, huh? Um, this is... 
the implications of this kind of work are really just starting to unfold. I think we're just at the tip of the ter uh, sorry tip of the pyramid here uh, of what the implications of what these these new studies are, are really showing. Um, global Coherence Pulse was really motivated in, in being founded out of a citizen scientist project. We really do uh, want to bring research to bear here. Uh, so using the app is an important part of that, right? So we can actually track who's, how many people are participating and what, how much coherence are we feeding the field. One of the ways uh, we're measuring that is through the Global Consciousness Project, which we're becoming the new home for, by the way, and are at, over the last year have been developing a new version of it. Um, if you're not familiar with that, uh, there's a whole hour presentation uh, on the Wake TV network under the HeartMath channel with Dr. Roger Nelson. But long story short, this is basically a global, think of it as a globally distributed scientific instrument. And these devices that change, or that make random numbers, that change their behavior in response to when a lot of people have an emotional response. And my favorite study that Roger or Dr. Nelson has done to date over the last 20 years is this one where he basically found that events that have a lot of love and compassion, like the Global Coherence Pulses that we're all part of, uh, our Global Peace Days, these types of things, have a significantly greater impact on moving the dial on this global network than uh, things like Super Bowls, a lot of emotion, but not necessarily a lot of love and compassion. Or low would be events that like terrorist attacks and school shootings that also trigger a lot of emotion. Um, so love and compassion really does matter. It is measurable uh, at a global scale in the global field environment. Now, one of our hypotheses is that it's not just the number of people, but it's how coherent we are. And this is actually also already starting to, to I think, to be kind of shown here. This is the GCP data, the output of this global network, uh, during the very first global coherence pulse we did. God, I forget the data, what's on here. Um, we've been doing this a while, Teresa. Um, I'm horrible with past time dates. Uh, and then we've been tracking them all. And this is the one in June, also a significant effect. And uh, in fact, Roger just told me, uh, Dr. Nelson, yesterday, he's been looking at all of them, has done a composite score. And overall, the global coherence pulses are a significant uh, impact on the global field environment, nice. which is pretty cool. Because it's a smaller number of people, right? And yeah. our, our longer-term goal is to measure how coherent are we as a community and really correlate the two and really prove the hypothesis. But that takes you guys uh, to do that. So that's it for me. That's all I wanted to, to, uh, to share. I think we're, we're going to do some uh, Q&A. Is that right, Teresa? Or what, what are we doing next? Yeah. Thank you for that, Roland. That's really nice just to keep touching back into those kind of core pieces. And also what I've been noticing being involved with HeartMath and Global Coherence Initiative over the last year and a half since the Pulse has started, right in March, I think was our first one, um, is that the technology and some of the things that you've been planning like the tree uh, monitors and like this light that's coming, it's like really some of the ways that make it more accessible for more people are really ready to come online now. So it's a great time for us to join together and use these tools that are doing it. And, and we're hoping too, that there's a group of people that do the pulses and do the care focuses and are willing to feed back, you know, what your experience is and to connect as a community together. So I'm, it's, I think this is the beginning of something like that. So Roland, I think a Q and A and I just thought that maybe for a moment so that we don't just jump right into the million things inside of our head, that we just take one moment of silence, come into our hearts, into coherence and see what questions are really wanting to be asked right now. And then before we go to the meditation, we're going to hear from Claudia Wells, who's also one of the co-founders of the Pulse and the Global Coherence Initiative. So so we'll do that before the meditation, but let's just do one moment of centering together.
Nice. We feel ourselves in this field together, joining our love and our energy. So if you have a question, I'm going to trust that as we're in coherence, this will flow really nicely. It's just, just like raise your hand, open your mic. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can see you. And if you need, if you, I don't see you, just say your name and uh, we'll, we'll take some questions. Andrea, I saw you went right away. Right. So yeah, go ahead and jump in. I have two questions. One, and both I think will be helpful to everyone. One of them is when you look at the map, there's like huge spaces where we don't have anybody doing this. Do you think that could affect things if we have all of our pulses together um, versus spread out over the world? So that's question one. You mean in the same room versus spread out? No, like on your map, when I looked at it, all the lights were most, mostly the US. Um, you had a few places um, in um, West, Western Europe, you had some Brazil, but then you had all of Russia, or it's not called Russia anymore, is it? <laughs> Where there's nothing. And I mean, would that affect things you think in terms of yeah. Well, the yes. balance? Yes, I do. The more, the more people, whether where they are, I don't think matters. I actually don't think that really, I mean, that's what the, the evidence is suggesting that the energetics are, are pretty much non-local. Um, so, uh, now my but, other question has to do with something you brought up a few times, and I think a lot of people might be interested in this. I have a small group of educators I'm working with. If I created my own little group in here, right? And during our meetings, I think I heard you mention during your Zoom meetings, if you have everybody connect in through that, um, you can read that and it does help the meetings go better. Is that what I was hearing you say? Say that again, Andrea. Okay. I didn't follow that. Well, you just finished your shift class, which um, I took. Mm -hmm. And you said you are now using the Global Coherence app mm -hmm. in your oh, meetings, meetings. Yeah. like in your regular Zoom meetings. Yeah. Some, some um, for what we do internally sometimes, we'll have, we'll use them, yeah. So, how how does that work? I mean, do you just use the main program, or do you set up a subgroup? No, we set up a, set up a group, set up our group for it. I that see. way, you can see what the group's doing, and somebody brings up a topic that you know may not be that popular. You actually see the, you know, I actually like to use. There's a one of the graphs in there is called called coherence over time, so you're actually seeing how the coherence score is going up and down with the group, and it's kind of amazing. Uh, and a few people have actually commented on that, uh, that when we, when we do use it, that it actually, they know they're being monitored and it really helps them be on their best behavior, uh, so to speak. So it, it has an inherent help there. Um, okay, it's a meaningful you. factor. I, I'm before go... I we ask the next one. Yeah, go well, ahead. Before go you ahead. do, I just, in chat, I just saw a bunch of dialogue going on about EEG in the uh, global consciousness data. Uh, Roger or Dr. Nelson decided to call in the original GCP one call them eggs, which stands for electrogyograph in his language. I think it's a little confusing because of EEGs that we use for brain waves, but that that's what that referred to. So far, we're calling them gyms in our new network. I'm not, in fact, let me just throw this out. I'm actually looking for some focus groups uh, at some point to really help name what we're going to call these devices in the global the next version G GCP 2.0. We're calling it. A whole new we're doing a whole new design to make these more sensitive and make them a lot easier for people to get involved with so if anybody has any any neat ideas uh, send them in for what we might name the physical devices you know eggs is i don't want to do eggs anymore we're going to call them something different sorry teresa let's go ahead no that's great i'm going to do bill uh, miller next and then we have katie and daniel and diana all three of you guys are, are up all right Yes, thank you. Actually, I think you just answered my question, but to clarify, I see on the application, you can set up your own individual group, and I'm assuming it's possible to get a collective coherence score just for that particular yep, group? Absolutely. Oh, great. Yeah. I've been and emphasizing track. about yeah. capability yeah, I, for decades. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's all tracked, so you can actually see progress over time. There's in the, the one of the first screens, you, you can look at your personal group and global group scores over time at the, you know, day, week, month, year level, you know, so you can kind oh, of wonderful. often what your scores are. Yeah. 
There's Good, a lot of thank you. In it, it's yeah. a, it's playing around with the app. There's a lot in there that we you know can't go through in a in a setting like this because because of time. Sure. Thank you. Great Bill. question. Uh, let's go to Diana next. Okay. Hello, everyone. Well, my question is. Does the coherence is affected if your heart rate is like too fast? For example, say uh, you have an arrhythmia or say you go to do some exercise. Is the, the coherence being affected? Yeah. Uh, well, you can't really measure HRV if you're actively having an arrhythmia. That, I mean, by definition, HRV is sinus-mediated heartbeats. You know, that, during an arrhythmia, which that wouldn't be the case. So, so no. Uh, okay. But in, uh, most people don't have arrhythmias full time, right? Or, or if you have a, a, if you're being actively paced with a pacemaker, you can't really do HRV either. If you're uh, doing uh, most sports, um, the physiological demands will override the, the more subtlety of coherence and incoherence. Um, it's because you're having to regulate blood pressure and all this kind of stuff because you're, you're, you're on the move. However, that doesn't mean that you can't be internally still emotionally and connected and, and coherent. It's just not going to be reflected in the HRV when you're very physically active. You know, although some, some sports like cyclists and things report they find a rhythm that they can be coherent and still be doing their thing and actually have a lot more endurance when, when they do that. But, um, okay. But for example, I understand what you're saying, but for example, Say that I exercise at say, 6 a.m. and I do this coherence practice uh, like 10 minutes after. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's great. And before okay. and I would recommend before and after. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diana. Uh, let's do Daniel next. Hi. Hello. Hi, Daniel. Everybody, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, good. I'm very happy to see everyone um, instead of the dots on the map. Uh, nice faces. I wanted to, um, to ask if um, I asked it before, I want to see some, I want to try to find some correlation between um, events, uh, global events and times when many people uh, practiced coherence. Um, is there any way to export this information so it will be easy to compare um, and to try to find those points in, in the media and news mm -hmm. um, so we can really see the, the effect because obviously there, are, there is much more effect than we see at the moment. We will learn the, what, what we are doing, I think, in, in many years from now. Uh, but now I, I would like to, to connect the dots um yeah yeah so would we uh, in fact that's a lot of what we're, we're hoping to do in the global coherence pulse community it's exactly what we're wanting to do is is really look at the co how many people are per contributing and what the coherence is and how that affects other measurable things like gcp being one the tree project you know the electrical activity of trees being another uh for now that's things that we can get our heads around and, and measure now, historically, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Global Consciousness Project, which is the random number generator network, sorry, random number generator network, that's been around for over 20 years. And in fact, Dr. Nelson's retiring and asked us to, to take it over now and, and create a new network. But uh, hundreds of events have been uh, formally analyzed there, and that's what the graph I showed you that those that have more love and compassion have a bigger effect. Um, so there's no question that, large, that global events that trigger a large emotional outpouring affect this, the, the, the global consciousness network. And, and by the way, it is emotion. Um, you know, mind intention and all that doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to care about that. It, it reacts to, some, you know, really sincere emotions, uh, whatever they are in, uh, in different ways. But uh, as I think I mentioned in, in my presentation, from uh, on my perspective, I think, well, not I think, or I believe that it's not so much numbers, but how coherent are we? So that even a smaller group that's highly coherent could probably probably have a much larger effect than lots of people, you know, being triggered into, you know, anger or anxiety, things like that. And there's already hints that that's true. Uh, in fact, the Pulse is already suggesting that. 
Hey, Roland and um, Daniel, this oh. brought up something for um, in the chat, just a question uh, around privacy fears uh, that the data could be exported and in, in used in ways that that would have consequences. I think the information in the app is is private. Is that correct, Roland? Or uh, it's absolutely absolutely private. In right. fact, in the app, when you first sign in, if you don't click that, you allow us to use your anonymous data in research. We don't even have access to it. So, but but please do allow us to have access. Those of you that, that come in, because it is anonymous. We have, your names would never be shared. All we ever be looking at are group level scores, things like that. You know, Great. Thanks. Never anybody's. Let's um. We'll take Katie's question, and then we're gonna um take some time to just do a little um meditation together, and just actually do be in practice. So, Katie, awesome. go ahead. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know how to hook into the technical. Hang on. I'm you mean gonna... with technical questions? Yes. Yeah. Why don't you, uh, I think uh, Jackie and Annette, are you going to do a session after this is over to address any more technical questions and issues? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. We'll stay on later and do that. All right. Thank All you. Right, thank you. We have um, uh, two things afterwards. Um, we'll do the meditation. We'll, um, uh, I think Claudia uh, will be available after our meditation. We'll share a little bit with us. And then for anyone that would like to stay on and connect with each other, uh, we'll open the line for some breakout groups for about 30 minutes, just to, for you to maybe meet other people who are using the tools and, and share, okay? So Roland, thank you so much. I think You're we're welcome. gonna. I think we're gonna go to Annette, and um, I put some resources in for some of the tutorials, and also a link to uh, the Awake TV. And I'll do that again. There's some wonderful um, things that Roland's been doing that really share about coherence and are super helpful. So the resources are there. But Annette, we're gonna go to you next, and Annette's just gonna guide us in a simple heart coherence practice. And she's going to put up a beautiful visual for us. And we all get to settle in and nourish ourselves and the field with our love. The heart lock in technique. And this is a technique that has been developed by the Heart Math Institute. You can have your eyes open or closed, whatever is more comfortable for you. And begin by bringing your attention to the area of your heart. Inhale and exhale deeply through the area of your heart. If you like, you can place a hand on the area of your heart if it helps you to focus more on your heart. And now begin breathing slower and deeper. Inhale deeper and slower exhale until you find a nice and comfortable rhythm. Deepening the inhale and slowing the exhale as steeply as you comfortably can. And continue breathing through your heart. As you generate a positive feeling inside, such as appreciation, gratitude, Care or love, calm or peace, or compassion for someone or something you care for. Something that gives you an uplifting feeling in your life. And allow that feeling to begin to grow within you, in your heart, 
and in your body. If your mind wanders, gently refocus on the area of your heart and reconnect with the feelings of love, appreciation, or any other uplifting feeling you're connecting to. And now radiate the positive feeling to yourself and to the whole Global Coherence Pulse practice group here. Practicing the hard lock in helps you recharge your own energy and balance your system. It will also benefit uh, the whole group practice here and the global field when we practice a global coherence pulse. When we continue with our practice session, bring these positive feelings that you generate with you. And know that you can maintain these feelings uh, throughout the day. And you can slowly bring your attention back. And if your eyes are closed, you can gently open your eyes. Thank you for um, practicing the heart locking technique with us. And uh, I think Teresa, you will continue from here. Yeah, just feels so good. I could just do that for another hour together, right? It feels so good. Um, I'd love to ask Claudia Wells to come on. She's part of our, uh, she's one of the co-founders of the Global Coherence Pulse. She's also one of the founding members of the Global Coherence Initiative. 
be lovely to hear from her. Hi, Teresa. There you are. Hey, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Annette, thank you for that beautiful meditation. Arun, thank you. Uh, I want to express my gratitude for everyone who joined us today and also for this technology because it can be so easy to take it for granted. But when I worked with HeartMath in my UC Berkeley corporate programs in the early days of HeartMath, we actually had to apply electrodes to the ribs of the executives connected to a big signal processor to show them the effect that practicing heart coherence had on their bodies. And seeing that objective data made all the difference to them in accepting the practice. I promise you they would not have accepted it as meaningful to them in their positions within these corporations without it. And I also want to acknowledge um, the Institute of Noetic Sciences and our chief scientist, Dean Radin, who has been with the Global Consciousness Project from the very beginning and is still part of our team evolving the project to the Global Co Coherence or Global Consciousness Project 2.0 which is a, a collaboration between IONS and HeartMath. And just to bring us back to the bigger picture, I, as I mentioned, I have a business background and there's a well-known business axiom that says we get what we measure because what we measure, we can manage. And a well-known example of how true this is, is gross domestic product. But a long time ago, Robert F. Kennedy famously said, Gross domestic product measures everything except that which makes life worthwhile. GDP was actually never meant to be the surrogate measure for societal well being that it's become. And it's even worse for the fact that GDP includes activities that subtract from societal and planetary well being, like those that contribute to climate change, like prisons um, and other activities that toxify our planet and our bodies. So if we want to measure for our collective well-being so it can be managed, we need new measurements. We need to measure more than our financial treasure and measure what our hearts treasure. And just a quick story, I went to the kingdom of Bhutan a few years ago, also known as the kingdom of happiness, to speak to the people who created the gross national happiness concept and index. And I learned there that because happiness is meaningful but hard to measure, they mostly measure the external conditions that they expect should give rise to happiness, like good education, access to good health care and, and social networks. What we have here is the opportunity to measure the inner conditions, the inner conditions that both give rise to and are evidence of the presence of happiness of love and gratitude at the core of the human system and in the social body. And then to observe how the energy of those inner conditions impact the outer world and our planet through our network of global sensors. This is how we may have the potential to help science tell a new story of what it means to be human and empower humanity to lift our world out of chaos and into coherence. So let's not underestimate the amazing opportunity that these technologies provide to us and the importance of what we're doing here together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bobby, can you say something? I know Annette has been joining us on the pulses um, and we're starting to track the number of people that are coming on, the number of people that are joining the app, you know, we're, we're actually really inviting more and more people to participate with us with these tools so we can start to tell this story. And so what are some of the ways like this group maybe could start to help us do that? Um, maybe as we post what we're seeing on our app on the, the chat when we're together. Um, yeah, what are some of the ways you can think of that would be start us on this, on this part of, of seeing more together? My number one thing is practice. You know, not just when we come together once a month or however, whatever the frequency ends up being, but really take this to heart and make it a priority. I was on a call recently with um, one of the founders of Pixar, not our ion scientist, another one who has um, a foundation for bringing mindfulness to 
of the West in the tradition of the East. And he said, the number one thing is to make this a priority in your life. Yeah, 100%. That's how we're going to be able to tell a story. As, as Roland said, it's, it's quant quality over quantity. So while, yes, we want to grow the network, we want to have the data that show that what we're doing correlates with what the sensors are saying. The most important thing is that we each commit to uh, raising the quality of our coherence hmm. in our daily lives. Yeah.